I'm Angela from Denver Public Library's Idea Labs. Today we're going to explore electronics by making a light out pop-up card. This project is a great way to learn about circuits while making a gift for a friend or to celebrate your favorite holiday. This card is made with a paper circuit, a working electronic circuit directly on paper. I like making paper circuits because it combines creative crafting with technology. Once you learn the basics of a paper circuit, you can start designing your own unique cards and projects using these materials. If you want to show off what you've made, tag us on social media with Idea Lab Makes. You can also tag Denver Public Library on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, at Denver Library. We also have a Facebook group you can join to share your projects or meet other makers. To follow along with this video, you'll need two pieces of letter-sized paper to print the templates on. A thick paper like cardstock works best. A downloadable template is linked in the description below. There's a page for the circuit and a page for the pop-up. Now let's gather the rest of the supplies. To build the circuit, you'll need an LED to light up your card, some copper tape for the wiring, this is about 15 inches, a button to turn the project on. I'm using a lily pad button. You can also skip the button and your project will be on all the time. A battery to power the card, this is a three volt coin cell battery we recommend a CR2032 battery. You'll need a pair of scissors, and we recommend a hobby knife to help cut the pop-up layer. You'll also want some tape or stickers for attaching pieces and decorations. To make the window in the pop-up layer, you can use a piece of vellum, wax or parchment paper, or tissue paper. To decorate the card, you can use stickers, markers, or other art supplies. Some optional tools you can use are a glue stick for attaching decorations and a ruler to help you cut straight lines. Before we start building our card, let's take a look at how the circuit works. This card uses a small battery for power, which will light up a tiny light bulb called a light emitting diode, or LED. The copper tape connecting the pieces is the path the electricity will follow from one side of the battery to the LED and then back to the other side of the battery, making a complete circuit. We've also included a button in the circuit so you can turn the light on and save some battery power when you aren't using it. If you don't want to use a button, you'll have one line of copper tape going directly to the LED from the battery. Let's start building our circuit. First, trim the extra space around the circuit template with scissors. The template has symbols and numbers to show us where the pieces are going to go. The colored lines are where we'll put our copper tape. The metal in the tape is conductive, which means electricity can easily flow through it. This tape has adhesive on it, so you can stick it right to the paper template. To start, remove some of the white paper backing and press along line number one. At the end of the line, cut with scissors or tear the tape with your hands. Step two is a similar line, but this one has a corner. Start at the end and press the tape along the line until you reach the corner. Here, you can make a crease in the tape by folding it backwards. Then carefully move the tape around the corner. When you see it start to make a fold, press it down. Continue along the tape line until you reach the end. Tear or cut at the end of the line. If you don't have a button, continue along to line three, filling the gap where the button would go. Line three is a little different than the others. Start by pressing the tape along the line until the edge of the circle. Instead of cutting here, leave about an inch of tape and fold it down onto itself to make a flap with copper tape on both sides. We've just created a copper tape battery holder. The battery will go over line one and under the flap we just made when it is time to power the project. Now it's time to add some parts to our paper circuit that will use the battery power. Let's start with the LED. This electronic part has to be plugged in a certain way in order to work in the circuit. LEDs have two wires coming out of them. The longer wire is the positive end of the LED and the shorter wire is the negative. You can mark the negative wire with a black permanent marker or nail polish to help identify it later. On the template, circle number four points to where the LED will go. There's a positive and negative symbol next to each line of copper tape to tell us where each wire on the LED will go. To help make the LED sit flat on the paper, we can use our fingers to bend the wires. But now it's hard to tell which is the longer and shorter wire which is why my little marking came in handy. Now that we've bent the LED, we can place it with the negative side touching the negative copper. And you can see the wire goes straight out so we can bend it a little bit so that the wire touches the copper tape. 
and we want to make sure the LED is right over that gap in the tape. To hold the LED onto the copper, use some tape over the wire. I'm using some colorful tape, but you can use clear tape or even a sticker. Press down to make a strong connection. The tape isn't a functional part of the circuit, it's just helping to physically hold the pieces together. Next, let's add the button. The oval with number 5 in it is where our button will go. And to secure that, we're going to use some tape over the ends. Now that we have the path for electricity and the pieces that will use it, it's time for the battery. The last part of the circuit is step 6 on the template, right underneath our tape flap. Place the battery with the positive side facing up in the circle on the template. Then fold the copper tape flap on top of the battery. We can hold it there and test out our circuit by pressing the button. Your LED should light up. To hold the battery in place, use some tape over it. I like to do one side along the top and the other side to keep it from sliding around. If your card isn't lighting up, it may be because the electrical connections between the pieces aren't strong. Try pressing down on places where the wires in the LED meet the copper tape. If the tape isn't holding enough pressure, the wire may be lifting up. If more pressure fixes the issue, place some more tape over these places. You can try this technique around the button and the battery to check that all the pieces are connected. If the path for the electricity to flow through is disconnected, the project won't light up. Here's a card where the tape got torn. To fix it, we can use a small piece of copper tape as a patch. Some types of copper tape do not allow electricity to flow through the adhesive. If your tape doesn't patch the tear, you can fold a piece on itself so there's copper on both sides and then tape that piece over like a bridge. If all the connections look secure, but the project is still not working, let's check the LED. Maybe it got put in backwards. Since I used tape to attach it, I can carefully peel it up and turn the LED around so it's placed the right way and then re-tape. That fixed it. The last troubleshooting technique we can try is to look for short circuits. On this project, I accidentally put some copper tape underneath the LED, so I'm going to pull that up and cut it so there's a gap that the LED covers. This project also has a flap that's going around the edge of the battery touching the bottom. I'm going to carefully lift that up too and trim it so it's only touching the top of the battery. If there's a short circuit near the battery, it may have used up all the battery power before you caught it, so you can test to see if it lights up and then get a fresh battery. Now it's time to add the pop-up layer and customize our light-up card. First, we'll cut out the middle of the frame to make a window. A hobby knife works best for this step. I'm going to use a ruler to help me make straight, even cuts. Next, we'll cut the two lines on either side of the window to release the middle so we can pop it out. Finally, trim around the edges of the template. Now let's fold the pop-up. I like to start with the dotted lines in the middle of the template. Gently fold them over, making sure not to fold the entire page in half, only the edges. Next, we'll fold the bottom of the pop-up frame. You can see the pop-up is already starting to look 3D. To fold the top of the card, we'll do two opposite folds. Let's start with the top edge. I like to move it around so it's a little easier for me to fold. Carefully fold in the same direction as the bottom edge. Now the frame should be mostly sticking out from the card. Finally, fold the last edge in the opposite direction to make the final part of the frame. This part can be a little tricky, so you might want to move it around to get a good hold on the fold. I like to press the card a few times to help reinforce the folds. The last step in making the pop-up is to cut out the window. You can use the inside of the window that we cut out as a template to trace. Add a little bit around the edges so there's some overlap when you attach it to the card. Attach the window to the inside of the pop-up card with some tape. You can also use some glue. Let's see how that pop-up looks on the circuit template. Carefully fold the template in half and then place the pop-up on top of it and press the button. See how the light shines through the window? The final step is to decorate the card. 
I'm going to use some stickers and some markers to decorate mine. This card can be customized for any holiday or occasion. To attach the card to the circuit template, you can use some double-sided tape or some glue. I also like to put a sticker or a note showing where to push on the card since the button is hidden by the pop-up layer. Here are some examples of light-up cards crafted by friends of the Idea Lab. Thanks for crafting with me today. I hope that you enjoyed creating this project and are inspired to try more ways to craft with electronics. If you want to learn more about paper circuits, check out some of the resources linked in the description, including some books about electronics from the Denver Public Library catalog.